and when the ego shall have triumphed over the carnal mind and transmutes the crude soul fluids into the gold of the new wine, it will ascend to the father, the upper brain, and the temple needs no light of the sun by day or moon by night, for the light of the Lord doth lighten it. The gospel miracle of turning water into wine is found only in John and appears as a companion piece to the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. The meaning of miracle is you to uncover a truth. We are indebted to Lawrence Palmley Brown for much of the following. See Open Court, May, 1920. This beginning of the signs and miracles Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed on him. This is the first miracle of Jesus, according to John, just as the changing of the waters to blood was the first plague inflicted upon the Egyptians as one of the miracles of Moses. But the Johannine marriage feast appears to have been recognized as a variant of the great feast of rabbinical tradition, which is to inaugurate the coming of the Messiah, and at which he shall drink wine made from the grapes that grew in paradise during the six days of creation, and was since preserved in Adam's cave Buxdorf, Synod, Judd, P. 460, the foe, Pen, King, Tsi, King, a Chinese life of Gautama Buddha, relates that this last Buddha declared that when one of his predecessors attended a wedding in the city of Jambu Nada, he not only kept the foods and drinks miraculously undiminished during the feast, but caused the host's uninvited guests to come and partake of it, even as the host had silently wished according to Lily. Buddhism in Christianity Pages 169, 170. Popular Life of Buddha. Pages 305, 306. Compare Eucharistic bread and wine to the flesh and blood of Jesus in the Roman Catholic doctrine. Words for bread are sometimes employed for all solid foods that are transmuted into the flesh or bodies of men while water or red wine is conceived to be changed into blood. Wine is often called the blood of grapes or the blood of the grape, as in the Old Testament Genesis. 11. Deuteronomy. 14. Etc. And the juice of the grape is naturally conceived as having been transmuted from water by the heat of the sun, which is also the chief factor in the fermentation of wine. In the Egyptian legend of Horus of Edfu, that God smites the enemies of Ra, and the latter says to the former, Thou makest the water of Edfu rid with blood like grapes, and thy heart is rejoiced thereat. Hence the water of Edfu is called water of grapes says, Rul, Ankh, Beg, and Bab. P. 220. In the destruction of mankind, the deluge is poured out from seven thousand jaws of human blood, representing the red color of the Nile waters shortly after the beginning of the inundation records of the past. 6. pp. 105 to 112. The mythic marriage is primarily that of the sun Cephedrus, I. Fab. 6. Either with the earth or the moon, whence. Doubtless, the Athenians at one time celebrated marriages at the new moon when she was in conjunction with the sun Proclus Adhesiod. Opa. 782. Practically nothing is related of the Johannine bridegroom, and there is no reference to the bride. But in the mythic view the bridegroom is a mere variant of Jesus, figurative bridegroom of John III. 29. CF. Mark. I. I. 19. 20, etc. While his mother and the bride are duplications of wider variation. Thus the Virgin Mary is often called the Rose of Sharon and Lily of Israel. Epithets from Canticles 2. Where the bride is a Rose of Sharon and a Lily of the Valleys.
who is brought by the bridegroom to the banqueting house, literally the house of wine, as in the Septuagint. John the Baptist, John, or loans, is the ointment, oil, that flows down the spinal cord from the reservoir of God's substance in the upper brain, the most high slash the heaved up place, the heaven within. We know that we have in heaven a more enduring substance, Paul. The mysterious circumstances connected with the Bible story of John the Baptist and the information given in Smith's Bible Dictionary prove the holy divine origin of that which was called John, but which means oil in Greek. John's father was said to be a priest of Abia, or Abijah. This latter, in Hebrew, means whose father is Jehovah. Jehovah is the upper brain, the most high the crystalline do refer to in medieval Hebrew. Before the oil is raised by the seed, thus giving one-tenth tithe to the Lord, it is called natural or wild, not cultivated, like wild flowers, wild honey. So John was a wild man, a native, a parable. Most certainly, his food was locusts and wild honey. The pineal gland and the pituitary body secret fluids called milk and honey in the scriptures. Locust means destructive, devour a glutton. Diet 28 42 All thy tree tree of life and fruit seed shall the locust's sex desire consume. The reader will please remember that the Bible is secret doctrine, or that which is within and not without. History is a record of outward things. John, the natural man, was an eater of the fruit of the tree of life, with a girdle of camel's hair from Gimel the third letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which pertains to the external male organ. But John, like the prodigal son, changed his mind and is made to say, One cometh after me to get me the latchet of whose shoes pisses the feet fishes I am not worthy to unloose. Latchet and shoes are emblems of cover, or cup, swaddling cloth. The oil in the seed, when born, is covered or protected by a crust of mineral salts, which, when anointed by being baptized in Jordan John, is loosened he that saveth his life shall loosen it. Seamish translation of scripture in order that the shell may fall apart when the seed, Jesus, goes over the cross. Thus, Father, remove the cup cover or latch it from me, in order that the precious material may ascend into the pineal gland. The plagues of Egypt, these same locusts, sex appetite, gluttony, or devourers, are and always have been the plagues, sickness and disease in all peoples in all ages. And now, when evil doers wax worse and worse, a majority of human beings are deliberately and with malice aforethought, committing suicide through eating and drinking for pleasure, and indulging in sexual excesses on every plane, in every way known to carnal puvets. Officers of the law tell us that licentiousness has surely reached its limit. The handwriting on the wall appears. In proof of this allow us to quote the following by the great poet, Rabindranath Tagore, printed in the August 1st issue of the Los Angeles Examiner. Paris, July 2031. I came from Asia expecting to find Europe a veil of tears a desert of misery and grief. With ten million dead, ten million stricken suddenly by shell or bullet from the roster of the earth, snatched from their firesides and their babies and the women whom they loved, what should one visualize but a Europe draped in black? A Europe where the innocent laughter of a tiny child would seem a gross incongruity. Yet Europe weeps not. She has cast off her black, and is wearing her brightest colors, her most splendid plumes. 
her men are already forgetting their slaughtered brothers in the incessant effort to profit from the abnormal financial conditions prevailing because of the war. Her women are her women. They are snatching flowers, bright red poppies, from the graves of their fallen husbands and sons, to wear them in their hair. Ten million dead and naught but dust already. Were these ten million the only sober, sane living people in Europe? Are those who are left only those consumed with avarice, selfishness and the desire to be amused that no matter what cost? Or is this Europe, which is dancing on its own coffin, a Europe gaunt stark mad? Paris, turn thine eyes to the south. There a templed city once stood, a living, breathing defiance to an inevitable death, a death that came sooner than it thought, and overwhelmed it. The name of that city was Babylon. Well named was Babylon. Well named also Paris, for call to mind the fate of her sister gods. They say to me, What strange man are you, to wish us eternal sadness? Would you have us grieve while we starve? Do you not know that work is impossible with a heavy heart and cannot you see that we have lightened our hearts in order to take up the burden our dead brothers have left to us? What strange man are you? I say to them, O rope, it seems to me that you are dancing more than you are working. Too many are living on the blood profits wrung from the slain. They say to me, What do you want? We fought well and we won. I say to them, so did Babylon. Yet, though she won, she lost. Bar ye that you do not share her fate.